Good evening, Booktube. Time to make a video. It is October the 1st, 2016. I made a video this morning at the uh, drop of a hat. I just... I try to be spontaneous in my videos. I don't really plan them out or... I just try to be real. <laughs> Just be as real as I can be. Transparent. What you see is what you get. So yeah, this morning I was reading that uh, Theoretica, Practical Theology, and I was thinking about preaching. And I thought about going into why I wanted to be a preacher, why I wanted to be a teaching elder. And even though I didn't really realize what that really meant or what that entailed until I went to Bible college and then I went to seminary. And I just thought, Maybe I, it's my romantic, I'm a romantic, that I thought, well, all that really matters when it comes right down to it. If you love God, and you love God's Word, and, 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 and people see that you love God and you love God's Word, then they'll call you to be a minister. And I was, I was totally wrong. That's not how it works. But now I'm 66 years old, which really, you know, I keep thinking about that because, you know, I still wear old clothes. I still like music. I burn incense. Uh, I like all the same things I did when I was in my 20s. And yet I look in the mirror and I'm not 20 years old. I'm 66 years old. Uh, I'm an old guy. You know, if I live another four years, I'll be 70. And that's... That's hard to wrap around my brain. So yeah, so I thought about talking about why I wanted to be a preacher and all that. But over the last, I've made 800 videos the last three years. I'm sure over those videos I have set forth those memories and bad trips in stumbling in the dark and being disillusioned. But hey, now I can just stay home, retired, old guy, read books, write my diary, make videos, watch the birds, see the full moon come up over the over Lake Michigan. <laughs> Be with my wife, talk to my children, Play with my grandchildren. Last night, our my son called and said, "You want to come over, Dad, for stew?" So I went down the street and had dinner with Caleb and Emily and Josie Joy and little well, Cora had gone to bed. The minute I walked in the house, Josie Joy said, "Read me a book, Papa." <laughs> so I read her a book, watched some football, had some stew with my oldest son and his family. It was a good time. Got home at 7 o'clock. Watched some more professional football. And I I should mention that uh, Sunday morning I went downtown to Reader's World, which is a retail bookstore, to get Sunday newspapers, uh, uh, Detroit Free Press, and New York Times Sunday National Edition. And of course, when I go to Reader's World, I look around at all the books and I have to buy something. <laughs> I have to buy a book. So this is a book I bought. I looked around. I didn't want any more fiction. I have a lot of fiction. Uh, I like nonfiction. And I found this nonfiction, The Written World, The Power of Stories to Shape People, History and Civilization by Martin Punchner. So I've been reading this. I, well, I took it to the book, book nook with me today. And I read 
I read it last night when I was watching football. And so I've been reading it. I read it today at the book nook. Since I've been home, I've just been fiddle farting around. Watching YouTube videos, writing in my diary. Today, on October the 1st, 2018, I ended on page 804. So, uh, so I went to the book nook, and this is the book I, I, uh, I had to pay half of this. It was a $4 book. I can spend two dollars. It was well, I bought it for four dollars basically. This is a book. This is called Art Since 1940 Strategies of Being by Jonathan Finberg. Uh, as you know, I'm into, the, I'm into the abstract painters of New York City in the 40s and 50s up until uh, Andy Warhol. And this is all about that time period and uh, like there's a th here are the beat generation the 50s in America so you know it's really nice nice things in here it had a chapter on uh, Jackson Pollock which you know is one of my favorite abstract painters William Cooting It also has a chapter on uh, Robert Motherwell, and there's a chapter in here on oh, all, all these guys I really like. Um, there was on there's a chapter on Warhol, Andy Warhol, Electronic Consciousness of New York Pop. I like that. That'd be a good journal entry title. The Electronic Consciousness in New York Pop. Uh, looks really interesting. It has a really nice kind of thing. So I got this today. Uh, it had a chapter on Francis Bacon in here in this book and I, and I was reading this last year, The Art of ri Rivalry, Four Friendships, Betrayals and Breakthroughs in Modern Art, uh, Matisse, Picasso, Manet, Degas, Pollock and de Kooning, and Freud and Bacon. So I got that back out to look at this, this week. Uh, I was really getting into it and then I got sidetracked it. So after the book nook, I was going to go get myself a pizza at Pizza Hut because there's nothing in the house to eat and uh, I wanted something fast, nothing I have to cook. And so I went, but before I went to Pizza Hut after the book nook, I stopped at a thrift store and found this book, Freud, A Life of Our Own by Peter Gay. Now I have this book in paperback. I had a paperback edition of this. Had it for a long, long time. But then I found a perfect hardback edition. It's not even look like it's red. And it's a little warped, but it's fine. So now I got two editions. I'll probably take this to the book nook. Uh, so I got two of them. See, I, I showed you I had Freud, the reader, by edited by Peter Gay. Also, when I, I have a big... Sigmund Freud collection. If I see books on psychoanalysis, Freudian psychoanalysis, books on Freud, his writings or biographies, I buy them. Uh, and I, when I was going through my books to D. Hall and take some to the library, I found this one I bought a while back. This came out of the library. This is a, a biography of Freud. The Man and the Ca The Man and the Cause, by Robert Ronald W. Clark. I have other biographies of Freud and his writings downstairs. Big stack. I even have Freud's cocaine papers. <laughs> so, uh, so after that, I went to the to the thrift store, found a book, a biography of Freud. Went to Pizza Hut, got a pizza. 
came home, and in the mail, I got a book from uh, Puritan Reformed Theological Seminary there in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which I mentioned this morning. I mentioned Dr. Joel R. Beakey. And uh, this was a book that was given in honor to the, the, the work and life of Joel R. Beakey. It's called Writings in Honor of Joy... Jo Joel R. Beakey, Peered in Piety, edited by Michael A. G. Hagen and Paul M. Smalley. So I got this in the mail, and the first check, the first thing is what I was trying to discuss this morning. What is theology? The, what is theology? A Puritan Reformed vision of living to God through Christ by the Spirit. That's what theology is, according to Reformed uh, dogmatics, living to God through Christ by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, I mentioned this morning about William Ames, and I, I meant to, sh I've been reading this in the morning along with Rise of Reform System, Intellectual Heritage of William Ames by John, Jane, Jane Van Vanette, Jan, and, uh, if you read this, that's how he defines, that's why I wanted to read this morning, when he defines theology, let me see, the first definition or nature of theology. He says, one, theology is the doctrine or teaching of living to God. Two, it is called doctrine, not to separate it from understanding, knowledge, wisdom, art, or prudence, for these go with every exact discipline, and most of all with theology but to mark it as this discipline which derives not from nature and human inquiry like others, but from divine revelation and appointment. So what he's saying is that theology, its source of theology, is God's Word, where He has revealed Himself. So anyway, I could go on and on, but I got that out. So yeah, the first chapter is in here is, uh, what is theology? That's why I was, I was reading been reading this this evening. I'm going to read it tonight. Writings in Honor of Joel R. Beakey, Puritan Piety, edited by Michael A. G. Hagen and Paul M. Smalley. I also got out to read about what is theology. I showed just Post-Reformation Reformed Dogmatics, Volume 1, Promagama to Theology, The Rise and Development of Reform Orthodoxy from 1520, to 1725 by Richard Muller. This is volume one, I think, it, volume one in a four-volume set. I showed these a couple of videos ago. I was reading today what the chapter, Theology and Religion, the meaning of the terms theology and religion. So I was reading that also this afternoon. So that's the, my Monday Reads. <laughs> The Written World, Freud, A Life of Our Own, Art of Rivalry, Art Since 1940, Strategies of Being, Puritan Piety, The Morrow of Theology by William Ames, The Re Rise of Reform Systems, Intellectual Heritage of William Ames, Post-Reformation Reform Dogmatics, Theoretica, Practical Theology, and Supremely, the Bible. <laughs> One of my favorite texts when I think about preaching is, uh, if I can find it, <laughs> I haven't looked it up in a long time. Uh, he says, uh, let me see here, but we have this treasure that's it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. This is the text that I thought would be the reason why I would be ordained into the gospel ministry. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I'm an earthen vessel. I'm clay. I'm not a diamond. <laughs> I'm not beautiful. I'm not pretty. I'm not polished. I'm not professional. I'm an, I'm an earthen vessel. But we have this treasure. What's the treasure? It's 
the gospel of God, the holy scriptures, the, the message of salvation, the, the message of the, of the cross of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So that's what I have always believed, that it would be God's power that would go, that God would bless my preaching and teaching by the power of the Holy Spirit, that he would apply that word and, and you know, comfort people, convict people, strengthen people, guide people, bless, heal, restore, salvation, whatever, that God could use earthen vessels, clay pots, <laughs> to uh, proclaim his word. And uh, unfortunately, in the American evangelical world, that, that's not so. So anyway, this is Monday Reads. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. I'll probably look at these books. Put books away. Tomorrow's a Tuesday, October the 2nd. My wife called me this evening. She'll be home Wednesday evening, Lord willing, that she doesn't get into a car wreck or a plane wreck or the, the Lord comes in the clouds of glory and ushers in the eternal kingdom of God. Who knows? So I got a book coming in the mail tomorrow. I got an email from Amazon, and I'll show that book tomorrow night. And so I hope you're having a good night. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. Pray you're all doing well, that you're having a good Monday night. And until next time, bye.